The bird, the bird, very well known. The pig. Very important that. Um, welcome to Brighton SEO. Uh, Hey everyone, I'm Noemi, Head of Marketing at Viaduct Generation, and welcome to our Brighton SEO vlog. Andy Jarvis, what would you recommend? What is your one recommendation to an SEO? One recommendation to an SEO is get up out of your chair, get out from behind your desk, and go and meet the people who actually buy the product or the service that you're trying to do SEO for. Because keyword research tells you a lot, um, reports tell you a lot, data insights tell you even more, but actually standing and watching people, seeing how they actually behave, what they do when they buy your product, that's where you see some gold. Nobody else is doing it, competitive advantage right there. I'm here with Azeem Digital. My question to you, Azeem, is what's been your favorite takeaway from Brighton so far? Oh, that is a tough question, but for me, uh, I've got to give a shout out to Andy Jarvis. Uh, his talk overall was brilliant, as always. No, he hasn't paid me to say that, but I think one of the most important things that he talked about was like thinking like an economist and thinking like, as he said, an A-level economist, <laughs> where we talk about price and pricing and understand where everything fits in with the bigger piece of the puzzle. I genuinely think, not just SEOs, but marketers in general, don't think about that too much and it, there's a lot of a stigma around it. If you didn't watch Andy's talk, I strongly recommend watching it just for that section alone and it will definitely help you think differently. But more importantly, be a better marketer. Love that. Plug, plug. Thank you. We're here with Jamie Riddle, and my question to you is, what should SEOs be looking out for next year? I think SEOs should be looking out for what Google is doing with its own mobile devices. So this is more than just mobile rankings, but if you have a Google phone, you can have a different experience to an iPhone user. For example, the Google 6, uh, Pixel 6 has the ability to have a, a magic eraser in Google Photos. You don't have that ability in the iPhone version of Google Photos. Equally, with Google Maps, if you're a contributor, you can upload videos as part of your review only if you have a Google phone. So this might be an outlier, might be further away, but I'm interested to see how the Google phone experience could impact how search results are presented. Brilliant, thank you so much. I'm with Anu, host of PPC Live, and I want to ask you, what should SEOs be looking for in PPC? What questions should they be asking to help? Sure, I think, um, you know, like SEO and PPC is, like a, is such a fantastic pairing, and I'm not just saying that because of the PP, last PPC Live UK, we had a talk uh, literally about that. and. One thing that was really like shown out is things like keyword research. You talk to an SEO person, they know about keyword research. You talk to a PPC person, surprise, surprise, they know about keyword research as well. And we do a lot of it. Um, and yeah, because to know what to bid on and to know the different variations and you know intent levels and which landing pages that we're going to send people to, we need to do keyword research on what's having volume, what's a good niche topic and niche kind of keywords to work with that will drive like the better conversion rates, the lower CPCs, cost per clicks. Um, and you know, even like things like being a, knowing like the rules and we actually, we are also told something like Crystal, um, Crystal on the web, you should follow her. Crystal Carter said that about uh, that PPC have that SEOs also need is that we always get in rules from Google as to what to do with an ad copy, how to, you know, what kind of keywords we can bid on, you know, what kind of the landing pages should be. And apparently SEOs do not get that information easily. We are told, we are always being told about the rules in terms of like ad policy, what will be, you know, used and what will be approved and what are the rules you have to make, need to make sure that you, you go by to ensure that you don't get an ad disapproved. Those information, that information, SEOs apparently also need them as well. So yeah, ask the questions about, can we see the results of your keyword research? What is working for you? Um, because some of my favorite examples that SEOs have given me is that when they try to you know, do a lot of SEO work, a lot of, it takes a lot of work to get to rank for a certain keyword. It takes PPC moments 
to know that a keyword will work or not because all it takes is bidding on it. So work with a PPC person to be like, hey, our client wants us to you know, optimize for this keyword. We are not sure it's gonna work. Can you test it out? Can you put some, can we put just some budget for it on a few days and see whether there's any volume towards it? Um, and yeah, that is how you can work very well together and really build great traffic for the client. I'm now here with Isabella, who is going to talk to us a little bit about SEO trends uh, to look out for in 2023. Isabella. Hi, thank you so much for inviting me. So, in my opinion, it might be a bit uh, controversial, maybe, I don't know. But I think uh, from now on, or next year, we should uh, forget probably a bit uh, that we're focusing so much on SEO and uh, really focus on building up the brands and uh, getting all of the marketing teams together and taking like a holistic approach. Because, well, let's be honest with each other, right? SEO evolved and changed so much. And we can't, we just can't keep doing what we did in my 2013 when I started, <laughs> right? Uh, we have to, in order to really get to this next level, we need to give Google what people want and people want the best brands, right? And SEOs can't build best brands alone. So we have to really get the, the brands and the owners and the employees and all our marketing teams together to build it up and then build up a strategy to shout about it, basically. That's, that's my opinion. <laughs> We're here with Rejoice from Be Digital. And my question to you, Rejoice, is what can SEO agencies do better when it comes to diversity? I think a lot of agencies should find communities that are already trying to solve the problem of diversity issues. So working with um, women in tech SEO, Be Digital, that are already embedded in these communities that you're trying to attain. I think being able to work with them, um, try to recruit some of their members, I think it solves a lot of issues because they already have the understanding of the actual problems being faced and that way it's a great learning moment for agencies as well to actually listen to what these communities are going through and then again meet new people, meet entry level, senior level, um, that's the first step, work with communities that are in it, doing it, the groundwork, perfection. Love that, you heard her. Hi, my name's Eva Chang and I'm a digital PR consultant at Evolve Search and my top SEO trend in 2023 is to look out for more reactive PR. We're here with Greg and he's going to tell us what trends SEOs should be looking out for in 2023. So, what should they be looking out for? Meta keywords are coming back, y'all, so pay attention. No, really, if you are a local business where you do business face-to-face -face with customers at a physical brick and mortar, or you serve customers in a particular geographic area, you've got to pay attention to your Google business profile, which is, by the way, the worst rebrand ever. We're all gonna call it Google My Business for another five or six years, but it is your first impression with any potential customer that searches for you by your business name, or, anybody that finds you through keywords related to you and you show up in the map pack. So you have to pay attention to your business profile and optimize the heck out of it if you want to be successful. I'm now here with Araminta and I want to ask her what are the top SEO trends that SEO should be looking out for in 2023? So there's probably three trends that I would mention. So the first one is I think more and more SEOs are going to start focusing on revenue, especially in an economic downturn. Uh, more clients, more companies, they want to see the ROI of their efforts. They're going to be focusing a lot more on profitability, on customer acquisition. So they're probably going to go to agencies, to freelancers and say, okay, how is this helping us? How is this helping the bottom line? How is this helping us grow? Um, another trend I'm seeing is that more and more um, SEO agencies or SEO freelancers are specializing in a niche. So for example, we work in finance and technology and I'm seeing more and more of this like, I don't know if decentralization is the right word, but more like people going to specific niches. Um, so I think we're going to see more of that and uh, more and more. Um, I think this is what happens in a downturn or in a recession is that more and more companies hire in-house or try and make things go in-house rather than hire someone external. But that doesn't mean that as an agency or freelancer you're losing a client, you can just adapt. So maybe do consulting services instead of purely execution. So there are ways to adapt to that. So that's maybe three that I'm seeing.
We're here on day two and I'm here with John Ruler, who is going to tell us what can SEOs do to do their jobs. Yeah. Oh my god, such a tough question. Uh, so I, I think for for a big part, a lot of the SEOs here are already doing the right things. So that's that's fantastic. I think from a technical point of view, things will are, are kind of already at a fairly high level and that will probably continue. Uh, SEOs and site owners keep making awesome websites, the platforms keep getting better, and uh, with kind of that high technical level, it's almost a matter of, well, you have to differentiate yourself by content and really make things that, that the people kind of find useful and helpful and that are unique and compelling. So it's not a matter of like, oh, how do I improve my internal linking so much? It's really more, how do I significantly improve the quality of my content? That's kind of where I think it's been getting for the last couple of years, but uh, it, it takes a while to get to that. Of course, we'll always run into websites that have severe technical problems and fix those problems. So that's, that's my take on next year. Brilliant, thank you so much, John. I'm now here with Dre, Bionet Generation CRO and co-founder. Dre, why do we love Brighton SEO? So Brighton SEO is a chance for all of us to come together. We bring our whole team and we make a big song and dance about it. We love seeing everyone having a good time. But I think uh, the best thing about Brighton SEO and the SEO community in general is like we share, we collaborate, we amplify each other and uh, Brighton SEO is just another chance for us to get together with some great faces and some, uh, some great people. And yeah, see you at the next one. Thank you. I'm here with the birthday boy, Fabio. Um, Fabio, what's been your highlight of Brighton SEO? Look, I, I think I have to say um, the the sort of group of us I just spoke right now in the expo in the expo one. Um, you know, it's, it was just unique today. I feel like all the talks are amazing. It's been amazing, but today we felt quite special. You know, because there's a group of people in the industry really trying to um, to diversify the spaces. You know, I, I spoke on my birthday as well, so that's always a highlight. It's amazing because I've been coming to Brighton for about six years. So yeah, it's amazing to, to now be on my own stage talking about the amazing work that we're doing at VG. Love that. Thank you.